You open the lid and press the power button on your Dell XPS M1330. It's got the new fast Intel Core 2 Duo T7300, 2 gigs of RAM, and the upgraded disk. It's loading Fedora 7. You look down at your watch, take a sip of coffee, stretch a little, and tap your foot. 45 seconds. And now you can log in. As GNOME 2 and its applications load on the screen, you look up. Auke Koch and Aryan Vandeven take the stage in September of 2008 at the Linux Plumbers Conference. Both developers for Intel showed that it was possible to boot Linux in under five seconds. On, of all devices, an ePC. <laughs> It was the small, light, and inexpensive netbooks that were, at the time, the future of portable computing. Of course, it was booted with solid-state storage, but even so, it was the fastest ever. And boot didn't mean as soon as you see a cursor or when the login prompt shows up. It meant that all services were up and the disk and CPU were both idle after pressing the power button. This feat was accomplished by removing time wasters in Fedora, extensive time running mod pro, poking at SE Linux for troubleshooting, bringing up the SMTP server, and dropping upstart, among other apparent witchcraft. By the end of the conference, both Fedora and Ubuntu had shaved some delays off their boot times, and the boot time wars began. The developers at Intel took this win, along with System D and a few more tweaks, into the lab. Six years later, what we know today as Clear Linux OS really began. On December 7, 2014, the first of the packages that I could find that would one day become Clear Linux OS were pushed to the release numbered 300. So rewind a little bit. We heard that in 2014, December 7th, that was the very first any kind of package I could see in, mm -hmm. um, in the repository. Right. It was back then. But we have um, a birthday celebration, a seventh birthday celebration that reminded us that the official release was February 6th of 2015. Three days later, the first downloadable images marked 300, 310, 320, 330, and 340 show up at clearlinux.org. On May 18th, Aryan Vandeven penned an article at lwn.net describing what clear containers are and where the project is headed. So the focus at this time was clear containers. Yep. And not necessarily the full distro, though. You needed the distro for the containers. In short, clear containers are a virtual container, not fully virtual machine, but not just a container either. It's the magic of both, and they start in under 200 milliseconds. Clear was showcased in the same week at the OpenStack Summit in Vancouver, which ran May 18th through the 22nd. In the showcase, it was said that the scope was limited to cloud usage and was only meant to address containers, security, and overall performance, which meant it clearly wasn't set up for a regular desktop. September 21, clear containers for Docker are available, which allow Docker applications to run within a clear container. In 2016, January 12th, the fruits of clear developers' labor were finally paying off. Michael Larable of Pharonix, using none other than the Pharonix test suite, consistently shows that Clear Linux, version 5700 at the time, was leading the pack, sometimes by a whole lot. This is about the time folks outside of the container world really started to pay attention. It even exposed performance issues that allowed the Clear team to further optimize. April 22nd. To capitalize on the fervor, Ike Doherty, Founder and then leader of Solus and Oke Kok from the Five Second Boot 
announced that the container-only OS will now start shipping a desktop for developers. The focus is on remote access efficiency, simplicity, familiarity, and sane defaults. Just add the OS Utils GUI bundle, and it'll pull down XFCE, 4.12, and other desktop goodies. In parallel, Robert Nessius announces the Clear Linux Installer 2.0. No longer would the installer nuke everything on a disk without warning, require the arrow keys, disallow you from going back, or enabling telemetry by default. Now, there's no surprises. Tab navigates, choices can be remade, and telemetry is opt-in. You can also review why the installer crashed, too. November 16th, while desktop is a big focus, the containers are still more important. It becomes clear that maintaining end-user graphical applications is too big a task for the current team. Enter Flatpak. The same OS Utils GUI package that provides XFCE now also provides Flatpak. However, the days of using FlatHub wasn't much of a reality for anybody just yet. November 28th, the auto-updater is here and enabled by default. You know, for security reasons. It's simple to disable by masking the SWAPD update service. 2017, May 24th, XFCE, while still available, is no longer the default desktop. It's GNOME 3.24, even though XFCE still squeaks past it in most benchmarks. September 20th, structural changes to clear containers happen in 3.0. Go is the language used instead of C. SE Linux works within the container. Clear containers can be run directly from within Hyper-V and other hypervisors, and even run on Kubernetes, which sets them up for December 5th. The Clear Containers project merges with the newly announced Kata Containers project under the governance of the OpenStack Foundation. Clear Containers 3.0 will live on just long enough to see the transition through, but the Clear Linux project lives on. 2018, March 26th, the first issue in GitHub about FFmpeg not being included shows up, and this ultimately points to all the proprietary codecs for encoding, transcoding, and Firefox playback. The general consensus is to compile FFmpeg yourself. May 3rd. Everything you need to know about Clear Linux, Clear Linux, is published in a markdown notebook called How to Clear. August 3rd. WireGuard is added to secure your traffic. August 28th, KDE Plasma 5.13 is now available to install. It keeps up with XFCE in many tests, but falls behind GNOME in almost all. November 5th, over on GitHub, it's noted that Snap was and will remain unavailable and unsupported. November 28th, a new installer beta is floating around at version 1.0.3 and it's still text-based. It does offer more disk configurations, but still without encryption. 2019, the new public forum is live. On March 27th, the decision was made in a GitHub issue that CUPS will now be enabled by default, and those that don't want this behavior can easily disable it. May 11th, playing off of many of the new features of the previous 1.0.3 installer, version 2.0 is released with a full graphical interface, the one we see today, mouse and all, which makes it very user-friendly, and Go still seems to be the preferred language. June 19th, in an Ask Me Anything session over at the Clear Linux forums, Aoke Kok says to the question, of if Intel sees clear as an option for normal users. He says, well, you can look at it from two angles. First, one of Intel's motto is x86 everywhere. That's the first clue. Second, from the people who work on clear Linux, we really don't want to switch to a different distro once we're done working. So there's the second hint. 
and there are a few applications where we know we just won't see clear Linux get used, and that's okay. But most generic purpose? Yeah, we want to support it. That totally includes gaming, office, etc. October 10th, offline installations are available, and three days later, XFAT is available. 2020, March 17th, lots of chatter in the ether about what Intel is really trying to do with its distribution. The word toy comes up a lot, and Aryan Vandeven sets the record straight. In reference to the desktop in general and adding weird packages, it is very hard to do a general consumer desktop, and we tried something different, aim just at software developers. We've been trying to accommodate most software as much as we can. Rather than everything, we need to make sure that what we do ship is usable, with a bias to servers and what developers use rather than random stuff. With the third-party repo stuff getting more ready, there's ways where others can provide their own repositories for that weird stuff without us being a bottleneck. April 27th, the distro will focus less on the desktop, but development will continue to maintain a more vanilla environment. They said, we still want to attract developers, but we are not as invested as we were in supporting a diverse and complex desktop environment or even multiple desktop environments. On May 1st, there were many desktop environments and window managers. Awesome, i3, and Sway as well as Enlightenment and LXQT. They were subsequently marked for deletion on this day. The focus will remain on GNOME, Plasma, and XFCE. In 2021, February 22nd, Clear Linux pulls out a win over Endeavor OS on the Ryzen 9 5700X. April 23rd, Ubuntu 2104 enjoys plenty of kernel performance improvements, but Clear wins again in all but a handful of benchmarks. August 9th, against Windows 11, Windows 10, Ubuntu 2110, 2104, and Arch Linux, Clear Linux wins again in 68 out of 102 benchmarks. Windows 11, it won one. 2022. January 27th, the first third-party SWAPD repo that I could find by Pavlo Rudy. February 8th, the telemetry client, it's out of here. Turns out all that information they were gathering kind of collected a little bit of dust. May 19th, between eight different Linux distributions, including Ubuntu 2204 and Fedora 36, Clear Linux wins out again in 47 out of 101 tests. The runner-up, CentOS Stream 9, won only 14. August 12th, Clear switches from the 02 compiler flag for the kernel to the 03 for more speed. Yeah, so that brings us to the end of the history.